kind of have not be relatives and be why so it's gonna hope be me huh what's good relatives uh so today we are going to get back into the uh, family history uh we're going back in on the delaware maryland family history um i'm gonna go in on a couple of these because i'm thinking of uh maybe trying to do uh do these where I'm live streaming. Um, but you guys let me know in the comments if that's something that y'all would uh, like to see. Um, but yeah, we're definitely going to start getting uh, some actual live streams going here. So maybe uh, when I put this video out, I'll do a premiere. Then that way we can all uh, be with each other, you know, in the, in the chat while it's uh, playing. I really just appreciate you all as always, and let's get into it. So first here, uh, we're going to start with the Baker family, and let's jump in. So we got Anthony Baker, born, say, 1695, was a mulatto man living in Kent County, Maryland, on uh, October 10, 1719, when a court found Josiah Crouch, innocent of having a child by his wife, Elizabeth Baker. He may um, have been the ancestor of John, head of a Kent County, Maryland household, uh, for other free in 1800, head of a Dover 100 Kent County, Delaware household, uh, for free colored in 1820. All right, so that's the Baker family. Um, I know that's not, you know, a whole lot of info, but they do give you, um, you know, the name, uh, the counties where he lived, and uh, even uh, one of his descendants. All right, so let's keep it moving. Next, uh, we are going to hit on the Banks family. All right. So uh, Catherine Banks, born, say, 1705, was a servant of William Ellis on uh, June 21st, uh, 1726. When she confessed in Kent County, Maryland court that she had an illegitimate child by Caleb Hughes, a free Negro. She was probably the ancestor of Matthew, head of a uh, Baltimore City household of six other free in 1800. Then we got Anne, head of a uh, Nanticoke, 100 Dorchester County household of one male under 10 years of age and three Negroes in 1776, head of a uh, Dorchester County household, uh, four other free in 1800. All right, let's keep it moving. Elijah, head of a uh, Dorchester County household of four other free in 1800. Henry, born, say, 1770. William, born before 1776, head of a Dorchester County household of four, uh, four free colored in 1830. Then we got uh, S uh, Senna, born, say, 1780, mother of uh, Charlotte Banks, who obtained a certificate of freedom in, George in uh, Dorchester County in, in, uh, on uh, May 17, 1832. Uh, light chestnut color, born free, daughter of Senna, also born free about 31 years of age, and then it shows where you can read about her certificate of freedom. All right, next we got uh, Henry Banks, born, say, 1770, and his wife, Rachel. People of color baptized their daughter, Peggy, in St. Paul's Parish, Baltimore. Their daughter was Peggy, born about 1793, nine years old when she was baptized on May 9th, 1802. And it shows where you can uh, find her records. All right, so that was the Banks family. And again, uh, some good info in there on uh, the county that these people lived in. Um, so, you know, if you are or your family comes up as Banks, um, this is where you can grab some of that information to uh, start your genealogy search. All right, let's keep it moving. All right, then we got the Banneker family. So a lot of us have uh, heard of this name. Um, so, uh, you know, we've heard of Benjamin Banneker. 
So let's get into uh, the family history on the Banneker family. It says uh, in 1836, a neighbor of the Banneker family named Martha Ellicott Tyson wrote a 20-page sketch of the life of Benjamin Banneker after interviewing his relatives, who included uh, his oldest sister, Molly Hendon, who uh, through far adv- uh, through excuse me, though far advanced in years, was still of sound mind. Molly's son, John Hendon, and Benjamin's niece, Harriet Henderson, they lived near the home where he died, about a mile from Ellicott Mills. Uh, J. Soren Norris read this sketch before the Maryland Historical Society on October 5th, 1854. Tyson located the Banneker family Bible in the family of George Barton and recorded an entry which read, I bought this book of Honora Buchanan the fourth day of January 1763. Benjamin Banneker was born November 9th, the day in the year of our Lord, 1731. Robert Banneker departed this life July 10th, 1759. And it goes on to say, and she reported that the family descended from Molly Welsh, a white indentured servant from England, who after the completion of her indenture, bought a small farm and two slaves, one of whom was an African prince named Banaka. She married him and took his name. They had four children, the oldest named Molly, a bright mulatto complexion and slender person and had an abundant suit of straight black hair, which led persons unacquainted with her origin to suppose she was an Indian. Molly married a slave named Robert, who took her name. Robert Banneke bought a farm from Richard Gist and lived on it until his death. Their son Benjamin died about 1804 and left uh, his farm to his sister his sisters, Minta Black and Molly Morton. All right, it gives you some information uh, on the uh, sketch and life of Benjamin Banneker, or Banneker, sorry. Um, and it goes on to say, uh, Silvio Bedini of the Smithsonian Institute wrote The Life of Benjamin Banneker in, seven, in uh, 1972. He repeated uh, Martha Tyson's stories about the origin of the family, found the May 22nd, 1735 marriage register of Catherine Banneker to James Boston, or Baslin, Negroes, and Esther Banneker to William Black, Negro in St. Paul's Parish of Baltimore and Lower Baltimore County, located the actual deed by which Robert Banneker and his son Benjamin bought the land from Richard Gist on March 10th, 1737, an account that Mary and Benjamin Banneker had with the Elliott and Company store for the year 1774 to 1775, and, and an obituary in the October 23rd, 1806 issue of the Federal Gazette, which stated that Benjamin died on October 9th that year. It says uh, one payment for Benjamin's account was made on behalf by Samuel Morton, who was probably the husband of his sister Molly, and Samuel and Samuel and Molly were apparently the parents of Greenbury Morton, who was employed at Ellicott's Lower Mills. All right, let's keep it moving. In December 2006. George Russell published an article in the National Ge- uh, Genealogical Society Quarterly based on his research of the original records of adjoining counties. He found that he found the February 24, 1748 Prince George's County will of John Welsh, by which he left his estate to marry my wife, directed that all his Negroes were to be freed and bequeathed to his mulatto, Samuel Moulton, all his movable estate after the death of his wife, Mary. 
His widow, Mary Welsh, made a January 7, 1752, Prince George's County will, by which she set free my mulatto, Samuel Moulton, gave him all her estate and made him executor of the will, appointed trustees to see that my people have their right of freedom and set free and discharge Negroes Benjamin and Alex and Alec on uh, February 27, 1757, Mary Walsh assigned to Mary Banneker her right to a mulatto servant called Samuel Mortar and recorded the assignment in Prince George's County on March 31st, 1757. And on December 3rd, 1773, she made releases of servitude to Negro Ben, born free, age 43. Negro Alec, born free, age 45. Moses Adams, age 27. Robert Adams, age 29. Jane Adams, age 21. Henry Adams, age 32. Jude Adams, age four, and Solomon Adams, age 22 months. And she bond herself for a 200 pounds sterling to be paid to Ben. Mary Welsh died before, before 20, uh, September 25th, 1775, when her executor, Samuel Moulton, entered bond of 500 pounds to administer the estate of Mary Welsh of Baltimore County. She apparently lived near what was then Prince George's and Arundel on Baltimore counties since Mary Welsh, uh, Prince George's County, was written outside her original will. All right, and then it shows where you can see that information. Let's keep it moving. It says, there is additional information not mentioned by Bedini or Russell. In March 1736, the Baltimore County Court declared that Robert and Mary Banneker were levy free during the lifetime of their crippled mulatto daughter, Julian. Robert was called Robert Banneke, a, free, a uh, Negro free, on November 1st, 1743, when the Baltimore County Court ordered that his daughters be levy free for the future. He owed 480 pounds of tobacco to the Baltimore County estate of Charles Christie, on June 29, 1762, and, and, and Ursula, Ursula Banager was presented by the Prince George's County or County Court in 1768 for having a mulatto child on information of the constable of Rock Creek 100. All right, then it gives you the court information on that. A Mary Welch born, say, 1710, was a servant of Thomas Hardwood on November 13, 1728, when she admitted to the Prince George's, Count, Prince George's County Court that she had a mulatto child. The court bound her for an additional seven years and bound her two-month-old her two -month -old son, Henry, to her master until the age of 31. Another servant of Thomas Hardwood named Mary Wedge had seven mixed race children by a slave between 1727 and 1738. So the clerk may have miswritten the name Wedge as Welch. All right, let's keep it moving. It says, uh, Mary, widow of Robert Banneker, uh, deposed on April 19, 1774 in Baltimore County that Benjamin was the true and lawful son of Robert Banneker, deceased. Although it is evident that Mary Welsh was the wife of a white man named John Welsh, it is still quite possible that she was Benjamin Banneker's grandmother and the mother of Robert Banneker's wife. On February 27, 1757, Mary Welsh assigned to her daughter, Mary Banneker, wife of Robert Banneker, her right to a mulatto servant called Samuel Mortar and recorded the assignment in Prince George's County. It shows where you can find that record. She called Benjamin and her other servants, my people. When she, when, uh, she discharged them from service, 
And there were other cases of white women having mixed race children by slaves and then marrying or having children by white men. Mary Vinson of Accomack County, Virginia, had a child by Southie Littleton's Negro slave, Aminadab Hanser, before 1665, and married a white man named John Oakey in October 1666. All right, and then it says um, Elizabeth Phillips of Talbot County, Maryland, had a child had a child by a slave in 1725 and another in 1726 and then had a child by a white man in 1731. All right, and this shows where you can see those court records. It says the uh, name Banneker may have had the same origin as the town of Banaka in modern day Liberia, which was part of the slave trade. The earliest recorded Bannockers in Maryland were Robert, born say 1710, Catherine, born, say, 1714, married James Boston or Baslin, Negroes, on a 22, May 22nd, 1735, in St. Paul's Parish, Baltimore. And it shows where you can find that info. Esther, born, say, 1716, married William Black, Negro, September 22nd, 1744, in St. Paul's Parish, Baltimore. Shows where you can see that info right here. And then we got uh, Jemima, born about 1720, married Hendon. She had a son named John Hendon, who was in charge of Ellicott and Company stables and was still living in 1836 when he was interviewed by Martha Tyson, the author of Banneker, the, Af the African-American astronomer. All right, let's keep it moving. It goes on to say that Robert Banneker, born, say, 1710, purchased 100 acres in Potatapsco, Upper 100, Baltimore County, called Stout, for 7,000 pounds of tobacco, listing his six-year-old son, Benjamin, as co-owner on uh, March 10, 1737. Shows where you can see those land records. He had also acquired 25 acres called Timber Point before 1737 when he was taxable on both tracks. All right, and it shows where you can uh, read that information as well. Robert was called Robert Banneke, a Negro free, on November 1st, 1743, when the Baltimore County Court ordered that his daughter be levy free for the future. He owed 480 pounds of tobacco to the Baltimore County Estate of Charles Christie on uh, June 29, 1762. He died on July 10, 1759, according to the entry in his family Bible. He had daughters Molly, who married a member of the Morton family, and Minta, who married a member of the Black family. He was taxable in Pot Potapsco, Upper 100, Baltimore County in 1773, Mary, widow of Robert Banneker, was still living on uh, April 19, 1774, when she deposed that Benjamin was the true and lawful son of Robert Banneker, deceased. Mary and Robert were the parents of Molly, born, say, 1730, married a member of the Morton family, perhaps identical to Samuel Morton, who was listed in the ledger of Ellicott and Company between September 1774 and July 1775. Samuel Morton was a mulatto belonging to John Welsh of Prince George's County on February 24, 1748, when Welsh directed that he be free after the death of his wife. Samuel and Molly were the parents of Greenbury Morton, who was employed at Ellicott's Lower Mills. Greenbury was head of a Patapsco hundred, Baltimore County household of seven other free in 1810. Another member of the Morton family was Deb Morton, head of a Baltimore City household of six other free in 1810 perhaps identical to Deb Morton, who was counted in Baltimore City with eight other free in 1810. 
All right, let's keep it pushing. Uh, Benjamin born November 9, 1731, listed as the six-year-old son of Robert Banneker and co-owner of 100 Acres in Patapsco, Upper 100, Baltimore County, on March 10, 1737. Shows where you can see the land records. He was a servant of John Welsh of Prince George's County on February 24, 1748, when Welsh directed in his will that my Negroes are to be free. He was taxable as a bachelor owning 100 to 300 pounds in St. Paul's Parish, Baltimore, sometime between 1756 and 1762. It says he signed the Baltimore County, Maryland petition of January 27, 1768 to move the county seat from Jopa to Baltimore. He sold 20 acres of his land to Greenberry Morton on uh, December 20th, 1785 and 10 acres to his neighbor, John Barton on uh, April 2nd, 1792. This was land his father had purchased in 1737. John Barton was head of a Patapsco Upper 100 Baltimore County household of five other free in 1810. Benjamin also sold two acres to Edward Sugar on December 10, 1794. Edward was head of a Patapsco Upper 100 household of five other free in 1810. All right, then we got Julian, uh, born, say, 1733, a crippled daughter of Robert and Mary Banneker. A daughter married a member of the black family. And then it says a daughter, perhaps Urs Ursula Banneker, who was present by the Prince George's County Court in 1768 for having a mulatto child on information of the constable of Rock Creek 100. She may have been the wife of William Hubbard, or Huppert, head of a Patapsco Upper 100 Baltimore County household of five other free in 1810. William was the father of Henry and Charles Hubbard, who obtained certificates of freedom in Loudoun County on December 24, 1795, son of a free woman and grandson of Robert Banneker, whose wife was also a free woman. Robert Banneker lived in Baltimore County, about two and a half miles from Ellicott's mill, Mills. All right, so then it has a little end note thing that, that uh, we're going to read real quick. A Robert Welch was counted in 1776 census for Ann Arundel County, entry blank. All right, so that was the Banneker family. So as you saw... Um, as we were reading in here, um, there were some uh, different spellings. Uh, they also had uh, some other surnames that fell in here as well. So if any of these people um, show up in your genealogy, um, you know, you got some counties that you can deal with to uh, kind of trace back to and some dates. All right, relatives, so let's keep it moving. Uh, next, we're going to do the Bantam family. All right. So it says members of the Bantam family of Maryland were James, born, say, 1730. Gabriel, head of a Caroline County household of eight other free in 1790. Delia, said to be over 100 years old when she was head of a Talbot County household of six free colored in 1830. George, head of a Talbot County household of three other free in 1790. Sally, head of a Talbot County household of uh, uh, three other free in 1800. Joe, head of a Talbot County household of three other free in 1800 and three free colored in 1830. Nancy uh, Bantham, Negro, head of a Kent County household of one other free in, eight, in 1790. Diana, born before 1776, head of a Kent County household of six free colored in 1830. Then it goes on to say that James Bantam, 
born, say, 1730, was a mulatto servant man listed in the inventory of the Talbot County Estate of William Brooke on May 7, 1754. It says he may, he may have been the father of James, born about 1757. All right. James Bantam, born about 1757, was the head of a Talbot County household of eight other free in 1800. He obtained a certificate of freedom in Talbot County on uh, May 24th, 1815. A black man, about 58 years of age, 5 feet 10, 3 fourths inches high, has the top of his head bald, was manumit, manumitted and set free by William Thomas. He may have been the father of, then they're going to say Levin, born about 1783, obtained a certificate of freedom in Talbot County on uh, May 27th, 1807. A mulatto man, about 24 years of age, five feet five feet seven and a half inches high born uh, free born of a white woman and bond to Christopher Bruff until he was 21 uh, years of age and it says uh, Edward born about 1790 obtained a civic a certificate of freedom in Talbot County on uh, July 23rd 1810 a black man about 20 years of age five feet seven and a half inches high Dark complexion, freeborn, raised in this county. Next, we got Harry, born about 1793, obtained a certificate of freedom in Talbot County on uh, March 20th, 1810. A black man, about 22 years of age, five feet nine inches and a half high, uh, complexion, dark coffee. Then we got Moses, born about 1795. Obtained a certificate of freedom in Dorchester County on uh, April 12, 1815, of a light chestnut color, born free. All right, relatives, so that was the Bantam family. And uh, again, uh, there may be, I think there was a little bit of a different spelling um, where they added an H in there. So again, uh, they were in Talbot County, Maryland. So if this is your people, they show up on that, uh, on your genealogy. Um, they got some good uh, starts with a lot of different uh, people's names uh, that you may trace back to. All right, so let's keep it moving. So next we have the Barber family. All right. Rebecca Barber, or excuse me, Barber. Uh, born, say, 1735, was a spinster white servant of Thomas Ozenden. In uh, November 1755, when she admitted to the Talbot County Court that she had a mulatto child by a Negro, the court sold her four-month-old son Amos until the age of 31 for five shillings. She was the mother of Amos, born about July 1755. This is other members of the family were David, born before 1776, head of a Dover 100 uh, Kent County, Delaware household of three, three colored in 1820. Simon, born 1776 to uh, 1794, head of a Dover 100 Kent County household of four, three colored in 1820. All right, so that was the barber family um again uh gives some it gives a little bit of information uh what county they lived in and it also gives some information on the uh the um kids uh, you know what county they lived in as well in delaware all right let's keep it pushing uh next we got the bardley family so it says members of the Bardley family in Maryland were Samuel, born, say, 1770, head of a Kent County household of three other free, and a slave in 1800. Then it says uh, Mary, born, say, 1772, mother of the mulatto child who was buried in St. Paul's Parish, Baltimore, on September 15, 1792. 
All right, so that was the Bardley family, and um, looks like they were also in, um, let's see, one of them was in Kent County, and the other one, it looks like um, she was in uh, St. Paul's Parish, Baltimore. All right, so let's keep it moving. Um, the next family we're going to do, oh, I'm sorry, is going to be the Barrett family. So it says Violet Barrett, born, say, 1720, wife of Darby Barrett, was living in St. Michael's Parish in August 1744 when she was convicted by a Talbot County court for having a child by a mulatto slave. The court, the court sold her as a servant for seven years. She may have been the ancestor of Anne, born, say, 1743, a mulatto woman who was the constable tax collector claimed, claimed, uh, claimed was married to a white man named John Start, who did not list her as a taxable in Talbot County. The jury acquitted him in November 1758. Uh, we got Susanna, a Spencer household, householder, who was charged by the constable tax collector in uh, Talbot County in November 1758 for failing to pay taxes on her person. Next, we got uh, Mary, a mulatto woman who was the con who the constable claimed was married to and living with Thomas Condon, a white man who did not list her as taxable. The jury found Condon not guilty in June 1759. Then we got Jacob, head of a murder kill hundred Kent County Delaware household of six other free in 1800 Isaac head of a murder kill hundred Kent County Delaware household of three other free in 1800 and seven free colored in 1820 next we have uh, Philip head of a Newcastle County household of nine other free in 1810 George free Negro Head of a Kent County household of eight other free in 1810 and seven free colored in 1820. Then we got James, free Negro, head of a Kent County household of six um, other free in 1800 and free three free colored in 1820. Then we got Samuel born uh, 1776, head of a Talbot County household of uh, four free color in 1830. All right, so that was the Barrett family. And um, again, um, there may have been a couple different spellings in there, um, but it does show you uh, the county that these people lived in. And again, um, if this is your people, uh, hopefully this helps with, uh, you know, finding uh, where they started out at. All right. So let's keep it pushing. All right, next, uh, before we continue, I'm going to take a quick drink real quick. All right, relatives, let's, let's continue. Uh, the Barton family. So we got William Barton, born, say, 1670. Um, it says a free Negro was baptized in All Hollows Parish, Anna Arundel County, on April 9, 1699. His wife, Mary, belong, belongs to Madam Taylor, was baptized on April 30, 1699. They were probably the parents of, Eliz of uh, Elizabeth Burton, a Negro child, who was baptized on April 16, 1699. Mary, Mary was buried in All Hallows Parish on May 7, 1711, and William was called a cooper in 1711 when he purchased two tracts of land in um, Ann Arundel County, one for 50 acres called Essex and one for 100, 127 acres called Kent uh, for 22 pounds. He and his wife Elizabeth made a deed, a deed of gift 
of the 50-acre tract to Anthony Hill in 1739. He was called Negro William Barton. On uh, July 23, 1729, when he petitioned the assembly to pass a bill to confirm the right of his heirs to inherit his land. In March 1734-35, he petitioned the Anne, Arund the Anne Arundel County Court to be levy free, saying that he was upwards of 70 years old, that his wife was nearly 70, and that he had paid taxes for himself for nearly 30 years and nearly that long for his wife. The court granted his petition. She was probably identical to Eliza Barton, who petitioned the court in June 1734, saying she was aged 66 years and unable to labor. Okay. Then it says, uh, William was the father of Elizabeth, baptized April 30th, 1699. William of William and Mary, free Negroes, buried in All Hollows Parish on April 11th, 1709. And we got William, born, say, 1710. Martha, born, say, 1728. All right, let's keep it moving. It says, uh, William Barton, born, say, 1710, married Sarah, Sav Sarah Savoy in All, Hell in All Hollows Parish, on uh, October 25th, 1731. She was presented by the Anne Arundel County Court in August 1746 for failing to list herself as taxable. They may have been the ancestors of James, a free Negro, taxable in Elk Ridge 100, Anne Arundel County in 1783, head, head of a uh, Patapsco Upper 100 Baltimore County household of seven other free in 1810. He may have been identical to James Barton, who was ordered to appear in Anne Arundel County Court to answer uh, Judah Savoy in March 1748-49. All right, then we got Henry, born, say, 1755, living with James Barton in 1810 head of a uh, Baltimore County household of eight other free. He may have been the father of Henry Barton, who received a certificate of freedom in Baltimore County on uh, April 24th, 1832. About 47 years old, light complexion, born free and raised in Baltimore County. Then we got Kizzy, head of an Ann Arundel County household of five, five other free in 1790. Susanna, head of a Baltimore County household of six other free in 1800 and nine in 1810. Then we got John, head, head of a uh, Patapsco Upper 100 Baltimore County household of five other free in 1810. He purchased 10 acres about a mile north of Ellicott City from Benjamin Banneker on uh, April 2nd, 1792. All right, shows you we can find those land records. So let us keep it moving. Next, we have uh, Martha Barton, born, say, 1728, confessed to the Prince George's County Court on March 24th, 1746 47, that she had a mulatto child. The court sold her to her master, Thomas Charter, for seven years and sold her son William to charter until the age of 31. On March 26, 1754, the court bound her four-month-old mulatto child named Thomas to George Hardy for uh, 31 years in order that she serve another seven years. Uh, she was living in Piscataway 100 on uh, August 23, 1757, when the court bound her two-month-old mulatto son, John, to Henry Hardy and ordered, and ordered her sold for seven years. She was the mother of William, born in January 1746-47, free Negro, head of a Prince George's County household of six other free in 1800. Then we got Thomas, 
born uh, November 23rd, 1753. Free Negro, head of a Prince George's County household of uh, three other free and a slave in 1800 and eight other free in 1810. Then we got uh, John born in June 1757. All right, let's keep it moving. Uh, so next we have uh, John Barton, born in uh, June 1757, was a free mulatto, head of a Prince George's County household of four other free in 1800 and five in 1810. He may have been the husband of Nancy Barton, a descendant of Rosamond Bentley, who recovered her freedom by a suit against Anthony Addison in Prince George's County Court in August 1781. Nancy Barton, born about 1768, received a certificate of freedom in Prince George's County on April 22, 1813. A bright mulatto woman, about 45 years old and five feet six inches tall, descendant of a certain Rosamond Bentley, who recovered her freedom in the Prince George's County Court in a suit against Anthony Addison. She was the mother of Thomas, born about 1791, received her certificate of freedom in Prince George's County on September 1st, 1818. A bright mulatto man, about 27 years old and five feet seven inches tall, descendant of Nancy Barton, a free woman of color. And we have Elizabeth, born about 1793, received her certificate of freedom on November 3rd, 1813. A bright mulatto girl, 20 years old and 5 feet 11 inches tall, daughter of Nancy Barton. And we have William, born about 1794, received a certificate of freedom on September 1st, 1818. A bright mulatto man, about 24 years old and 5 feet tall, descendant of Nancy Barton, a free woman of color. Then we have uh, James Richard, born about 1797, received a cert certificate of freedom on uh, September 1st, 1818. A bright mulatto man, about 21 years old and five feet nine inches tall, descendant of Nancy Barton. And we have Charlotte, born about 1800, we see their certificate of freedom on November 3rd, 1819. A bright uh, mulatto girl, about 19 years old and five feet four inches tall, a descendant of Nancy Barton. And we have Anne, Mar Anne Maria, born about 1803, received a certificate of freedom on November 3rd, 1819. A bright mulatto girl, about 16 years old and five feet two inches tall. Descendant of Nancy Barton. All right. So that was the uh, Barton family. Um, some good information in there on uh, counties they lived in, birth dates, um, and even some uh, other um, surnames of some other people. Um, but if these people, uh, again, show up in your genealogy, uh, this is definitely a good start here because it has some good information on it. So I think we will stop there for now. And when we jump back into this next, um, we are going to uh, do the Bass family of Delaware, Maryland. All right. So uh, let me stop screen sharing for a minute. All right, relatives. So um, I hope that information uh, helped. Uh, some of you on your genealogy search. Um, again, um, I'm thinking about, you know, possibly trying to uh, live stream while we do this. Um, this particular video, I may just do a premiere on it. Um, that way we can all be in the chat together um, as it plays. But as always, um, I appreciate all the support out there from everyone who's been uh, leaving me comments. Um, I'm glad I'm, I'm actually helping, uh, you know, people out there. Cause that's what I said that, you know, I'm trying to do and I'm, you know, I'm being genuine about that. But, uh, again, if anyone has any questions, um, about any surnames, 
um, I would definitely do all, you know, and the, the best that I can to help you find uh, the families that you're looking for. Uh, but again, uh, thank you all very much uh, for watching the videos. And um, as always, I will see you next time. Later.